What's going on, ladies? And welcome again to Heart Talks, where we discuss topics specific to women. Yes, ladies, here in this podcast, we aim to get you motivated and elevated. Thanks for joining us. God bless. Good evening, ladies, and welcome to Heart Talks. This evening, I would like to talk a little bit about women that make a difference. Let's talk about women in your life that has made a difference. Sit down and think about it. Who's made the biggest difference in your life? Was it your mom? Was it your grandmother? Your auntie? A good friend? Was it a tutor? What is, was it an educator? Was it a mentor? Women, we can make a big difference. Another thing I would like to talk about today is women that make things happen. So first off, I hope you guys are having a great and fantastic week. My week is going pretty good. It's been busy and that's always pretty, pretty good. I have to make myself lay down, rest, and kick back a bit. But um, let's just get into this about women that made a difference. I would say the number one woman that made a difference in my life growing up was my mother. I watched my mom work so hard. I watched her work, uh, go to work in the morning, work eight hours, come home, cook dinner, get our, uh, school clothes ready, get our lunches ready, and then go work a part-time job. Or I've seen her go to work in the evening uh, in some places, and, and sometimes in the evening take a course at night after working a full eight-hour um, shift. So I learned my work ethic from mom. I've seen her um, sell dinners, and those dinners used to be good back in the day. My mom and this lady, Miss Frances, they used to make dinners that had the fish in there, fried fish. And it was rice and collard greens in there, cornbread, and a slice of cake, pound cake or either potato pie. Then they had the chicken dinners that had the um, macaroni and cheese, collard greens. And I'm getting hungry thinking about it. But my mom, they did dinners on the weekend. They did uh, fruit cake. She sold uh, pound cakes here and there. And now she bakes big time with the pound cake. She does that uh, as a retired woman. But that woman showed me how to work and how not to be lazy and trifling. She was a hard worker. Back in the day, those women didn't get the recognition that they deserved. But a lot of them worked very hard. And I also learned as I got older that when they were uh, upset, and I took it personally, um, and maybe you took it personally when they were upset, your mom was upset with you, but you didn't know what she had to go through out in the workforce. You didn't know what she had to go through out in the public. You didn't know that she had worked hard. And also she, my mom was a single parent. She's been happily married now for a long time, remarried, and my father's deceased. But my uh, mother worked very hard to raise her girls. So this woman taught us so much. Um, she taught us how to organize. She taught us how to keep ourselves up. And we thought we dressed pretty sharp back in, back in the day when we were in school. You couldn't tell us nothing with all of our gold chains hanging down. Uh, the shorter ones and then the middle, the ones mid chest and then the long chains. We had the earrings and the bracelets and the rings and the, the all the designer jeans and all of that. She also taught us um, to work very early on. I remember working as soon as I could get a work permit. And I think I was about maybe 15. Started working as a secretary in a boy's home. Then after that, I went and worked in a uh, pizza place. As a waitress, I wasn't that good of a waitress because I remember getting a penny tip one time. So, but anyway, nevertheless, we worked. We worked. We had vehicles at a young age. And my daughter was just talking to me the other day about the difference in 
uh, the teenagers now and the teenagers back in the day with us. And it seems like we were more mature. It seems like we just handled things. Um, it seemed like we had priorities. Uh, I remember us going to school, getting out of school early, going to a job, things like that. We didn't have the social media. We didn't have all the kids that were rich kids around. We didn't have all these examples of people that had left school and became rich overnight. Um, The rap game was just coming on the scene when I was getting out of school. It was the Sugar Hill Gang. It was uh, Run DMC, and I I guess I'm telling my age, but um, we didn't have a whole lot of very rich overnight rappers. (laughs) So we had to work. So um, that is the woman that really, really influenced me concerning work. And she also influenced me in my faith. I would like to say that. I saw her pray. I saw her get up when she was down. I saw her persevere. I saw her going from one type of woman to a totally different type of woman. Full of love. Full of uh, laughter. Full of peace full of just joy. Oh, my mama was everybody's mama. When I was in college, my mom's house was the place to be every Sunday because she had some good food going on. Everybody would come over there after uh, church on Sunday, get them a plate, sometimes go back for seconds, and then be spread out somewhere sleeping on the floor, letting the movies watch us. So my mom always had open arms. She always uh, allowed the the neighborhood kids to enjoy themselves at the house. Uh, the kids weren't overbearing, but being that she came from a big family, she was just open. So our house was the house full of kids, or we all on the porch or outside, and uh, kids were welcome around. And I remember those memories to this day, good memories. My mom, I give her the props today. I don't have to wait until Mother's Day. She was an influencer in my life. So think about it. What woman influenced you? What woman caused you to make the decisions you made or that you didn't make? What woman said a little few things in your ear to help you keep going? What woman encouraged you to push a little harder? Think about that. These women made a difference. And they deserve their props. There's several several women that come to mind in the Bible uh, that really, really made a difference in the life of people. And I want to talk about uh, today, there was a harlot named Rahab. And I'm going to call her the good whore. You know how we talk bad about people. We call them hoes and whores. Rahab, she was a good hoe, if you want to say it like that. She was a woman that put her neck on the line for her family. The Bible talks about Rahab in the book of James. And it talks about her having faith. It says in James chapter 2, verse, um, let's start at 23. And it says here, and the scripture was fulfilled, which says, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him righteousness. So believing had a lot of power. Believing is a big deal. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the friend of God. You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Likewise, in other words, and in the same way, Rahab the harlot was justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out another way. Rahab was a harlot and she helped Israel. She helped the people of Israel, the spies that had come in to her city. She hid them and assigned to them when they were going to come back and destroy the whole city was she was supposed to let out a little um, a rope, a red rope, to let them know the army's coming in. Do not bother this house. 
I helped you all out. I scratch your back, you scratch my back. In other words, I looked out for you all. Look out for me and my family. Now that was a good woman. That was a woman, not necessarily so-called morally good, but she did something by faith. And it's, you know, no, it's so uh, notable that it's in the Bible that Rahab, the harlot, also was justified by works. When she received the spies and sent them out another way, she helped them out. So you know what? It's good in everybody. We might think people are low down. We might think people are no good. We might think people have nothing to offer because of their lifestyle or because of a profession or because of something they temporarily feel they have to do to make ends meet. But let's keep in mind that there's good in everybody. Let's not judge anyone for the predicament that they're in because guess what? God can bring them out just like he brought us out. And Rahab the harlot was considered justified by works when she helped the people of Israel, the people of God out. So anyway, this woman, she did something that was noteworthy. And so um, let's keep in mind women that have helped us. They might not have been perfect in every area, but if they've helped us, they have helped us. Let's give them their props. Some people have acted in faith on our behalf. Some people have given us good recommendations. Some people have uh, spoke well of us, and we don't even know about it. That propelled us into an area that we might not have otherwise made it to. So let's be thankful for any woman that has helped us out. You know, a lot of times in life, women bicker, women fall out, women don't get along. But let's shift that thing. Let's try to get along with our sisters. We're not going to jail with everybody. We're not going to be up and down with all women. But you know those who you're supposed to run with. You know those who you're supposed to speak with often. And those who you speak with every now and then. And those in your life, you might have a friend that you speak to once or twice a year. But when you do speak to them, you pick up right where you left off. Then there's also women that come in your life for a season. They come in your life, they fulfill that purpose, or you fulfill the purpose that you met them, and the Lord, you know, causes you to part ways. So some people come into your life for a season, and some people come for a lifetime. Your spirit will let you know which is which. I also want to bring up this, um, the fact that we are different from men. We are very different from men. Uh, I've learned recently from a class that I'm taking that men and women have different brain uh, hemispheres. Not that they're different, but I've learned that the left and right hemisphere in the brain of a woman is closer together. And that this is why we're able to process things quicker, to give quicker answers, and to also tell people how we feel about what was just said. And it takes men a little longer to process. So when you ask your husband or your man, look, why haven't you fixed that car for me? Why haven't you changed the tire? Why haven't you fixed the light bulb for me? When are you going to cut the grass? Sometimes it's too much for them to handle. Sometimes they're not functioning the same way you are. And guess what? I just learned that what we're asking them to do, sometimes it's not humanly possible for them to process all of it because they're wired differently and they have to separate tasks and do them as they process in their mind what's going on. A woman, on the other hand, we multitask. Let me tell you something about my mom. Growing up, I saw her driving, dropping us off to school while she was on her way to work. She was eating her breakfast, and she was putting on her lipstick and her makeup, combing her hair, drinking her coffee, and still keeping us straight in the back seat at the same time. Women, we do it. We multitask. Men, on the other hand, they have to take things in, in little cycles, take little bits and pieces and do it. They are just different. 
you know. So let's stop expecting them to respond the way we do and see them for who they are, accept them for who they are, and work with them the way they are. Oh, yeah, it, it it's kind of, it's not easy. I'll say that. It is not easy because we're different. But we have to slow down and learn them. And there again, I'll tell you, I'm just learning about this, about the men, you know, the brain being so different. We've always heard men are from Mars, women are from Venus, but we really, truly are wired differently. And we should really appreciate that. Ladies, and then let's talk about um, praying and acting. Have you ever heard somebody say doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting a different result is insanity? My goodness. Hmm. Let me tell you something. When I was younger, I thought all you had to do was pray and pray and pray about things because I was a, a praying person. Matter of fact, too deep. So off on the deep end that I never considered that there was a natural side. I'm going to go back to James for a minute. Hmm. I'm going to go right here to James. It says, um, James 2.14, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does, but does not have works? Can faith save him alone? What, do, what does it profit? My sister, if someone says they have faith but does not have works. In life, we have to learn that we got to have faith and we have to have works. For so many years, I thought all we had to do was pray about it, whatever it was, and it was going to automatically turn out right. If you have an ailment, sometimes you have to take the medicine and you have to pray. You know? If you have a situation... Sometimes you have to make a phone call and pray and get it straight. Get it right with the person you fall out with, that you've fallen out with. I thought for several years if I wanted to date and finally settle down that all I had to do was pray and fast. Pray and fast. Three day fast. A one day fast. A half a day fast. A Jew's fast. A Daniel's fast. And then just pray and pray and pray. But then when men tried to approach me, I was unapproachable. I was so deep that it was running the men off. And one thing I learned about men, they just want to chill sometimes. They want somebody they can talk to about the football game or the basketball game or how their day was at work. And I was wondering, wonder how so-and-so and this person is, you know, marrying and that one marrying. And I know I'm not a bad-looking girl. I cook, I clean, I have a decent job, you know, I have my own place, a car. Why aren't they pursuing me? And I finally was uh, corrected that I was just too doggone deep. I had to learn to chill. I had to learn to just be a person that listened to them and be a person that went on a date without you know, turning the date into a Bible study or turning the date into something religious, mm -hmm. you know. I even now hear people saying, you know, you're not supposed to date, you just marry. Well, it didn't, you know, work for a lot of people like that. Some people, maybe it does. Maybe some people, they do have an experience where they can uh, meet and marry and everything is happily ever after. But for the masses of us, it's done naturally. You guys ever think about, um, you know, that there's two sides to this thing. And um, one side is faith. That's the prayer. That's the belief in God. And the human side is the works. And to package it is not so easy for all of us. So I'm going back to James 2 and starting back at 14. What does it profit, my sister, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? you got to have faith and works. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food 
And one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled. But you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? In other words, if I call you and say, look, can I have some money? I need some food in the house. We're hungry over here. And you say, God bless you. God cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I'm hungry. Can I have a few dollars? Just say, no, I don't have it. Don't get deep and quoting scriptures all the time. This is something we do to people. Just say, I can't do it. I can't help you to people. Or I have it, but I have it slated for something else. I can't give it to you. But I will pray for you. You know? So this is a thing that, that I'm really, really trying to get to the bottom uh, to, you know, the bottom of it with, with women. And that is us being authentic, being real, and seeing things for what they are. And just approaching life from the standpoint of faith and reality. And I think that's what happened in Jesus' world. Everything wasn't so deep. He wasn't floating all the time, walking on water. He was down in the trenches with the people. And we're going to have to do that too in our life. So faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. That's James um, 2.17. So let's keep that in mind that we must act. We must act at times. You know, I met a lady years ago that um, she always kept men around her. And I was wondering how this woman kept men around her. She wasn't the deepest woman in, in the scriptures. She was just a regular woman. But she had studied uh, basketball. She had studied football. She had studied soccer. She knew how to play pool, how to play cards. People used to play spades and tonk and all kinds of stuff. And I only knew Uno. But um, this woman always kept a man around, kept a man around. They were, you know, kept him engaged, talking to him. She knew what teams played for what state, who the coaches were, who the uh, MVP was, the most valuable player, who won the Super Bowl, who won the basketball tournaments. This woman had always kept men around her. She did her homework, and that's a smart move. So we have to broaden our thinking, you know. Some men don't want their women into sports, but some men do. They want to talk about it. They want you at least to be interested in what they're interested in. So, And some don't mind. They want you to go ahead and do your thing while they do their thing with the men. It just depends on the man and what he wants. So um, just a long story short, let's be open. Let's balance our lives and know that God is bigger than what we could ever imagine. Let's not box him in to our little way that we think. Let's not think that other people don't have a relationship with him. Let's not think that he doesn't reveal himself to them because he revealed himself to us, even in our lowest estate. You know, our lowest state, he met us. He came to the gutter and got some of us. Let's not think the next person cannot hear from God or be led, or corrected, or awakened by the Spirit of God, okay? So, you know, the woman that has most influence in your life, think about that woman, and just when you get a chance, you know, you might want to say hello to her, reach out to her, if you're still in contact with her, and remember that, um, We need each other as sisters. We need to pray for each other. We need to fast for each other, especially in the times we're living in. And we need to show love to one another. Let's pick up a phone and call our sister and say, hello. How are you doing? How are the kids doing? Do you need anything? Do you need prayer? Let's reach out, keep up with our sisters. Not that we're responsible, but just because we want to sow a seed. Because one day we might need a phone call. And if they're busy, they'll call you back or text you back. Let's just do our part in being the friend that we always want. I hope everyone is having a great week this week. It is almost going into a new month. October has been good. There's a lot of changes going on. 
but we're going to keep pressing toward that mark and holding our head up, serving the true and living God, being at peace, and being a better woman as the days go by. You know, let's keep doing that. Let's keep being women that pray and act. Let's keep being women that uh, go forward in faith. Let's keep being women that's full of peace. Let's keep being women that encourage other people. And that's really all I'm saying this week is let's be better women. And remember those women that have made a difference in your life. So you guys have a wonderful rest of the week. Thank you for joining on Heart Talks. And very, very soon, we're going to have some phenomenal women as guests on here, telling us about their lives, telling us about their testimonies, telling us about the occupations and the fields that they're in, their businesses, their ministries. It's going to be wonderful. I just thank you for joining me. I thank you for whatever you've sown into my life. Pray for me and mine, and I will pray for you and yours. God bless you. Bye-bye. What's going on, ladies? And welcome again to Heart Talks, where we discuss topics specific to women. Yes, ladies, here in this podcast, we aim to get you motivated and elevated. Thanks for joining us. God bless.